Um, so first of all, I'm Rotem. Um, yeah, every time we go to, I go to a security conference in Israel. There's always a mix-up between which Rotem bar uh, and Gidi say the. It's always uh, funny. Sometimes I get his uh, tag, he gets my tag, but uh, it's very confusing for the people. Um, but except that I'm in security from like 20 years now from the IDF. I did uh, also InfoSec and Pentest and um, network security, stuff like that. Went to do pen testing and red teaming all over the world. Worked with uh, um, production plants and uh, like uh, vehicle production plants, vehicle security, stuff like that. Uh, did hardware and along all the time over there, I was very fascinated by VDP, like telling companies what their problem is. Uh, VDP is uh, vulnerable disclosure programs. And like in the last 10 years, I think, bug bounty started coming. Actually, my first bug I reported to was to Google. I found that Gmail, uh, cross-site scripting and Gmail, I tried to report to them and uh, I, I wasn't even able to contact them at first. I got no no bounty, no nothing, but uh, uh, it was funny. Actually, I got my name on the Hall of Fame and now currently it's already so old, it's not even there anymore. Um, at Palo Alto, I do AppSec Innovation and that's me. Um, I hunt for bugs most of the time uh, in different areas and different hats in my life. Let's see if I can go forward. I have, yeah. So I want to talk about like why hackers do bug hunting. I did I did a lot of pen testing and red teaming and stuff like that. And also looking and doing bug hunting, and it's a bit different in the vibes and a, diff a bit different in how how to approach it. And I want to talk about different changes in the mindset and everything and why do people do bug, bug bounty? The next thing is, of course, why should companies do bug hunting? Because why should companies uh, use bug bounty and not use only Shai Khan or other like uh, uh, Pentest companies and uh, SDLC and all of uh, the stuff over there? Um, I will talk again about bug bounty hunters and then we will have a summary about everything you can ask me whatever you want um so why do hack hackers hunt and this is the first answer money um but also in pen test That's you do presentation ends. <laughs> yeah. yeah um also pen pen test does money and uh, security assessments uh, you can get a lot of money from us over there but there's a change in pen test and then red teaming and whatever you have a job, you will get paid whatever, even if you are not good at it, or even if you're good at it, the bonus compensation usually is very small. Um, and it's a fixed price. It's a fixed payment. And it's a very, it's usually, it's good for most people in the world because most people want to know they have their job doesn't matter if they're good or not, they will be able to survive at the end of the month. A bug hunter that does it 100% of the time, it doesn't have this feeling. And this feeling is a bit like, it's a problem if you don't, like if you're not good, if you have, you start having imposter syndrome, uh, you need to always be in the chase and uh, be the best in what you do. And not all people are good at it. Uh, the thing that as a bug hunter, the more you hack, the more money you will receive. So you can hack 24 seven, not eat, maybe eat a bit, and then you will get a lot of money if you're good, of course. Um, the other areas is when I pen test, I have a bug that I find. Let's say I find even a bug that is like half a zero day or something that is uh, interesting. And if I can exploit the system, it's good for me. And as a pen test, it's okay. I, I don't get any added value. As a bug hunter, I can take this bug and go to all my other targets and start playing with them and know, okay, if this is this method or this tactic worked in one place, maybe it will work in other places. And I can multiply myself. 
And then the next thing is I want to go play with my kids. I want to go do stuff. I don't have a boss of my own. I can automate myself. Like I will get the money if I automate it. And this will just be a machine that creates money. Um, so this is a good area why hackers or bug bounty do this. Um, the other area that I actually, I started more from this area and not from the money because I do have a full-time job and I, I'm okay. Um, the collaboration, when, when I pen test or when I work on a system, usually I work alone or with another person that I am teamed with. And when I do bug hunting, I can choose whoever I want from the thousands of people that are doing bug hunting in the world. I can share tactics. I can talk with them. We can collaborate much better without the barriers of the corporate systems and the companies telling me, no, this is a secret of the company. You cannot share this. Or I don't even know if I can share it or not. I can help other people. Maybe they pay me with bounty tips. Maybe not. Sometimes we split. Sometimes not. It doesn't matter. I also, when I have a question from the community, I can ask them. And this is a very important aspect of the whole bug bounty community. It's a good community. Lots of people are very passionate, want to help each other. And it's a good way even for people that are just coming into the industry and are not experts uh, uh, to start playing with and they get the boost to get in and then maybe continue or to a uh, proper security field, uh, pen test or red team or whatever, or to go continue full-time bug bounty or do both. And together, like, usually I feel that when I work with a team, I, I'm better myself because I want to work with them. I feel like uh, they help me. They... Uh, um, I help them and together we push our limits. Um, questions I can answer. I like, I'll answer, I'll ask them, I'll answer them at the end. Yeah, a bit of a challenge, and challenge is actually very interesting because as a pen test, I did pen test and I was very good. You can ask Shai, uh, we worked together a bit. Uh, but at start when I started bug bounty, I didn't find nothing. And it was very challenging and very frustrating even to understand why, like, wh why is this happening? And in Pentest or in Bug Bounty, this is not a CTF. This is not something that you know there will be a, prob a problem that you can solve or find a bug or find what someone else, maybe there's nothing. And this is a mind game that you play with yourself. You don't know when to stop or what is the limit um uh, where should you focus on the other thing is you you're hacking usually on very secure systems tens or hundreds or thousands of people pen test red teams already looked at these systems and they played with them uh, and this is very challenging and like i i like the challenge and i know i know lots of bug bounty hunters do like this challenge and want to go and because of this are using are doing these challenges and not a ctf or not a regular pen test that you get from a bank that already you know already all the, all the results from uh, before um and then you also have just to you have time to find a new zero day you don't have if you do have the time and and you don't have this fear time limits and stuff, you can just dig in until you find a zero day and then just go multiply it and uh, find it everywhere. Um, so the challenge is good. You can be a hero. And this is, uh, um, you can go and really affect not one company or not one area. You can go and make the world a safer place. You can go and fix stuff um, wherever you go, wherever you go, everywhere I go to, my wife actually told me like one time we were in the hospital. I saw the computer in the hospital. I wanted to hack. She said, "No, don't hack into <laughs> them." Uh, but I want like I I see stuff and I want to protect them. I want to make them uh, better. Uh, you can help humanity in general. I don't know 
if background or security helps humanity or makes it worse. But uh, um, but at the end, because this is public information and it's a always uh, like mostly public, you can get recognition for it. When you hack, when I hacked into Gmail, I got recognition and I got on the Google website. They say wrote them, help them. And this is very good for yourself, okay, good for your CV, good for your story. Um, and the more companies you, even before we got, got into Palo Alto Networks, I hacked into Palo Alto Networks and they gave me recognition. So it's uh, it's always, it's good. It's uh, It feels good that people recognize you and, uh, and you can just like have this uh, aura around you. Um, and this is the different types of people, uh, hackers that I understand. But then if you look like, if I go in some ways and I compare to Pentest, the compensation in Pentest is fixed. It's promised, but it's capped. It's always capped. It's always like, and the companies always low value all, all the time. They don't have budgets to pay the proper budgets. So it's always a game of, how low can you go or like how how do you play the game and bug hunting you have it's based on impact it doesn't matter if you find SQL injection it it matters where you found it and this is the main difference between the two if you find it in a system that nobody cares about they will pay you nothing maybe a bit fifty dollars but if you find it in a system that has access to everything they can pay you even 10k or even more um and it can go endless uh, if you play with the multipliers uh, the challenge in bug hunting there's no travel issues you have constant competition you always have the imposter syndrome and you will always almost always be black box and in pen test and this is this is actually one thing that is very good in pen test and this is why i love pen, pen test uh, Today, when I go and uh, hack as Pentest, I ask for the source code because I can, and the company can give me it. And if they give me the source code, I can find much more faster vulnerabilities. And in bug hunting, almost never they will, they will almost never give me a source code. You can steal it, but uh, it's a different game. <laughs> uh, and then also you have the first eyes. Then you'll become hero for, uh, for other reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in pen test, you are the first person that, that sees this system. So of course you will have much more issues. And this is too, this is okay. This is part of the game. Uh, so. If you want the more issues and uh, you can be more junior style and uh, like go and find and uh, go with the source code and really help the company, it's good value. And then in the bug hunting, everything that uh, everybody missed. Uh, from the coverage area, in bug hunting, it's statistical. You don't know how much coverage you have. Uh, in pen test, it's time-based. You know as much as you gave time for it. If you gave 100 hours, you will get 100 hours, 100 hours of pen test without the driving uh, to the company and the, so work from home. Um, and and that, that's important, by the way, from the other side. So when you do pen test for your own system, I mean, for, when you order a pen test as a CISO, you should know that the other side, again, no one works for free, shy correct us if, if we are wrong. Eventually, if, if the company estimated it in, I don't know, 200 hours, they will eventually, you know, provide you with a proposal for 200 hours-ish. I mean, it's a fixed price. If eventually it will cost 400 hours, obviously no one will actually do it. So no one will actually cover it fully. On the other side, for bug bounty, basically, you know, someone can can try to hack you over and over and over again because they are looking for that all in grail, the, the one time that will pay it all. Yeah, so that's that's another thing to consider. Yeah, and then if you go to collaboration, like bug hunting, you can collaborate with everybody you want, or everybody that is invited to the private player program. Or, but in pen test, it's inside the company. You're usually stuck with the person that 
was available at the same time uh, for this project. You can sometimes plan it, but mostly it's it's you against the world uh, with resources from the company itself. Um, now, if I looked at the bug bounty and the bug handles, now the company itself, and uh, I, those are big questions. Do we need pen test or do we need bug bounty? And I'm talking about like a one-on-one of a company, just you have app developers, you have DevOps, you have IT, you have BI, you have peop other people. And all of these fabulous people, you have also AI agents now, and all of these people are 24 seven pushing stuff into your production environments. They are pushing code, they are pushing configuration, they are pushing servers, the cloud assets, apps, applications, they're developing features. They are doing lots of work always just to make the company work. And we want to add security to this area. So we will eventually, and this is part of the whole security life cycle, we will add pull request scanning. We will add IDE scanning to the developers. We have uh, peer reviews to um, review each other's uh, code. We have app scanning and infrastructure scanning and cloud scanning, uh, CSPM and CVE, like you've all mentioned uh, over here. And we do CICD scanning, part of CIDR and Palo Alto uh, that we did, we did. And then you have this yearly quarterly plans for code review. And then you can get from Shai or other companies code review, configuration audits, app pen tests, info pen tests. And this is everything that you need to do uh, to have a basic understanding of security. And the question is, is this enough? And I'm going to talk about like the low points over here. So from pull request scanning, you have pull request scanning, but a developer decided he wanted to just now use a language called, I don't know, BrainFuck or whatever like a language uh, that he wants and security isn't supporting it, but he wants it and he needs it. And, um, and this is what he's using. But then also, even if he's using a JavaScript language and he's using a library that isn't known or just that is a niche library that nobody supports it, then we need apps of customization. So it's always a game of security to go and customize the stuff. Also, ID scanning. I, as the developer, it gives me, it costs me 2% CPU. It gets my fan and my computer to start running. I just disabled ID scanning. It's not worth it. Maybe some developers disable it, some don't. You don't even know as security if someone disabled it. You have peer review. That's good. And usually most, of the developers will help each other and how much performance or how much, how does the, the code look and how, how will it be readable? Not much developers look at, ah, this is a security bug, uh, fix this. Some do, but most no. Um, app scanning, you have crawlers that get stuck because there's a JavaScript uh, redirect or some other uh, JavaScript magic that someone put in. Idle and Bola is not supported usually in uh, app scanning, and you have much, much problems over there. Then I have infrastructure, infrastructure scanning, it's payloads. If you don't have the payloads, uh, and the company, as much as I love companies and uh, hackers are doing it much faster, you can look at Nuclei. It's a play from Project Discovery. They have this the amount of the uh, configuration scanning over there uh, that they're building is like so faster than any company I've, I've seen. And it's all community-based. You have cloud scanning. Um, you always have so much assets in the company that is going up and down that it's hard. And then CV scanning, we talked about prioritization with Yuval and false positives and false negatives. Too much results. No one is validating properly. Uh, you don't know if a package, what source code it has inside. And you have so much like stuff that we can do over better over here. Uh, you have CICD scanning. It's cool. It's a new area. It's a bit early in maturity. Also from customers to understand what's the impact. And also, so just now the attackers just create a pull request in GitHub and steal all your environments. And 
you can do it for any company in the world almost. Um, and then the most interesting stuff over here for the code review and the app pen test and info pen test, you do this audit and you do it quarterly or yearly or whatever, but you don't give him access to the code and you don't give him access to resources because you want to pass SOC 2, because you want to pass the compliance. So you want to give him the full and to say to you gave him everything that he want, he needs, but you actually hope that he will find nothing or nothing that you cannot handle and fix easily. And this is a game that from security and compliance, it's a bit to edge sword or like a, you don't know which side you want to be over here. So in reality, there's a lot of areas that still pass through the filters of security. And then bug bounty comes in and you have all of these different types of hackers. If they come from the, for the money or for collaboration or for giving your name inside your website, their name inside your website, or just for the challenge because it's fun to hack TikTok. Um, it's different, different ways and different uh, ideas. And then they will go and do all the recon and scanning and the subdomain enumeration and looking at everything over there. Um, they will do manual testing. Sometimes for a, a pen test has this 100 uh, hour limit but the bug hunter doesn't have this limit. He can go and think about it and go even next week or in two weeks or even uh, one day in the shower, just pop out, uh, think of something and will go to the deepest and craziest areas that nobody went just because he's thinking about your systems all the time. Uh, those new tactics, dependency confusion was born in Bug Bounty uh, by Alex Bilson. You have the community, they share with each other, with the world. And this is part of the game of what Bug Bounty do. I'm going to a live hacking event next month. Um, you meet lots of other people, you learn from them, you team up. Um, it's like part of a game. Um, I think like, one more thing is like, I wanted to say like, I when I was in AppSphere, actually we had a bug bounty program. And one thing is the game from the company is to be able to focus the bug hunters to your program because they will go, whoever pays uh, more money, whoever has better scopes, like a wildcard scopes, they will go to areas that interest them that they can monetize because some of them are living on this and if they don't have good monetization uh, from you they will continue to somewhere else uh, and also if you try to screw them up if you if there's my weak programs that are not mature enough if you have many problems and they have lots of duplicates then they will feel like oh you're just not taking them serious and they will leave the program and when they leave the program, they tell all the community, their friends inside the small forums that this program is not fun, is not giving, is not paying, and they will just leave it. So it's part of the part of the game is to be good with them, help them, give them bonuses, um, because they also have they have a lot of companies, and each day they have more and more companies uh, to work for. And I hope, hopefully. In the future, every single company in the world will have a bug bounty program, and then you can choose wherever you want to hack. Uh, currently, I have lots of, like, I scanned a few assets that I found, and I see there's no bug bounty program. And then it's a problem because it's I, I don't have enough time to go and submit to all of these different companies and start convincing them this is a problem. Um, if they pay, then I can do ROI for this time. But if not, then, then there's lots of customers that have huge holes. There's other human beings that know about these holes and they, they're doing nothing because they don't have a bug bounty program. So the big question is, do you have an immune system inside your company? 
Um, that's it, I think. Excellent. So thanks a lot, first of all. Uh, there are a couple of questions that have been raised. Uh, before continuing again, uh, right now on the slide, you, are, you see the link and the QR code to join our uh, community on LinkedIn. And later on, you will see the recordings there uh, as well as the slides. So there are six questions. Okay, let's start with Daniel. Daniel asks, I noticed that some systems don't handle special characters like uh, uh, apostrophe. Is this catered for uh, in some of the systems used for pen testing? Maybe that's one also is for Yuval and Chai. But again, yeah, I think it's usually one. because of SQL injection. Usually if there's, instead of just handling SQL properly and doing it with parameterized queries, some companies go and just remove the special characters like a protostrophe uh, and then think they are safe from SQL injection. And then the way it's not only from strings, sometimes it's by a number like or order by or something. And then over there, you get the SQL injection, you can have fun with the system. So. Even if they don't, so, but I guess there's all there's all category if you want to Google it of evasion techniques, which is generally the techniques used if they do block or unblock a specific characters. If you want something to read about, you can go to OWASP cheat sheets. That's a that's the resource you want to read about. Uh, I'll type it down for you. OWASP cheat sheets. Just a sec. There is another question about, by the way, a platform similar to, to I mean, you mentioned some, may I wrote them, uh, some bug bounty programs. I mean, the companies that uh, or platforms that manage them, all companies. So how can Acker One and, and others uh, can help organizations avoid the weakness described in bug bounty programs? Okay, Hacker One. I didn't understand hacker one and bug those. So, how few... can hacker one or other, you know, the, the competitors can help organizations, I mean, the customers avoid the weakness described in the bug bounty program? Yeah, what you described all, before, basically, that. Yeah, first of all, like the communities, they hacker one has a role, or usually, they, they will help companies start easy and slowly with a bug bounty program so they will load into a private uh, private mode that is they will start selecting select the hackers to hack on it in a low uh, low traffic and then once uh, the company is mature enough and uh, can handle more areas they will uh, they will start inviting more people uh, and then open publicly at the end the other uh, the other thing is that they has they have also triage uh, triage uh, triagers that help triage the initial findings and then they help uh, the company understand better what's uh, what's the problem because sometimes the attackers and there's different type of bug hunters sometimes they know how to find technically the problem but they don't know how to explain it they don't know how to proxy it to the company to be a, for the company to be able to use it uh, use it properly and uh, use it in a way that they can um, they can go and fix the problem uh, and this is the proxying that these platforms do yes and, and in addition to that also those programs like Anchor one they also do some some kind of triage not just for the findings but also triage or filtering for the pen testers so for example if you don't want to take a risk uh, with it you know open a bug bounty uh, they can actually vet the the bug the, the, the bug hunters for you, so you can actually, yeah. for example, I know that we we use them in the past, and we actually asked for only specific uh, uh, members that we can actually choose uh, by name or by in this case nickname, obviously not the name, but they actually vetted them before we allow them access to some of our more sensitive environments. Yeah, there was refresh us. Difference, and there's also. I have like if you look in the hacker in my hacker one profile, I have a blue icon. It's a it's a hacker one clear, it's called, and then they do background checks and more um, more checks yeah. for the hackers themselves. So that's that's another plus. Uh, 
Uh, Ori asks, considering Barbank is a secondary income, is there competition in the field? Can you give estimates in rate per hour or something like this for people who are new or experienced in the bank bounty field? For example, you know, the, the potential in income uh, uh, or money. It depends, it depends how much, if it's a secondary income and not full-time, then it actually depends on how much you put in and what, what do you want to do? And it's like, if you focus... So let's say you have you have the more easy targets. Let's say AT and T. I don't know, or like uh, uh, other other targets. Those targets that pay less and they are more easy, and you can get from a cross site scripting fifty dollars for a cross site scripting. You have other targets um, that are much more mature, and already people went over them, it's very like in Gmail and today, it's very hard to find a cross-site scripting. Gmail can pay you 10 to 20K per cross-site scripting in Gmail. Um, so it depends. But let's see what if you can actually find. Yeah. Uh, so if you go and find something and uh, you know how to like, lots of people also find niches like DOM-based cross-site scripting. It's a niche. Um, you, most pen test companies don't know how to find them. Um, some do, uh, and then in this niche, you can have good money value ROI if you're good at it, or other like a uh, response building or other more sophisticated, more technical, complicated attacks get you more value because the more you go deeper, um, less people go into it. Awesome. So another question is, as a beginner bug, <laughs> if you remember, we call it bug bounty as well when we, when we prep for the panel. So bug bounty, or oh, bug hunter, that's the, that's the actual name. But uh, as, a bug, as a beginner, uh, can you share communities that can help with starting? So I think that any CTF uh, platform can help you start, right, your, your journey. Play along with it a bit. I mean, you can try to understand. And actually, in Hacker One, there's a CTF. Uh, there's also in Bug Cloud. Uh, there's uh, lots of information over there. You, and you have just Twitter. You can go over uh, Jason Haddix. There's uh, a few people that just you can go and uh, follow them. Jason Haddix and uh, Katie, and uh, I can find more. But also, we have a bug bounty community in Israel. I can share the link. We have a WhatsApp group, and we meet. Uh, we chat. had a meetup in B-Sides, uh, the last B-Sides, in TLV. Uh, you can ping yeah, me so up. That's another one. Yeah, so that's another one. The, the B-Sides, again, it, it just ended. So uh, you, you'll need to wait for one more year for the next B-Sides, but the uh, B-Sides. And for, for female, for women, you, have, you also have the Akiriot. Yeah. Like there are really lots of communities. Just Google them and you will find so many. But again, start from any type of CDF, play along with it, see that you actually like it first, and then start you know moving along and to, to more mature communities. That's I think the yeah. best uh, approach. Maybe we can organize uh, we organize like meetly where we meetups monthly or the tw- every two months of background meetups. Mm-hmm. Maybe Pantera want to host us next time or somebody else. Uh, we can talk and then you can just come and uh, uh, join our next meetup. That, that's, uh, that's interesting. Very well, and Daniela, really, so they can definitely take it uh, uh, internally and, and get back to us. That, that can be really, really cool. Is it realistic to earn my? Okay, so basically, that's I think we already answered. But the, the question is is it realistic to earn more money full time bug bounty than pen testing? Do you need to be a unicorn for that? Uh, <laughs> I, I assume that. In anything, you, you need to, to be a unicorn when there is competition. But I think the competition in bug bounty is, I mean, is not that hard. So there is still a lot to do, right? Yeah, you because can it's international. Know, full-time money. It depends on how much money you want. to. If you live in Southeast Asia or in uh, India and you want to get full-time bug bounty, you can do it. Uh, you can go to Thailand. Go on the beach, do full time bug bounty, um, have a good life. It's easy, and you still have some uh, savings inside. Yeah, if you want to. And again, the, the better you become, the better you become. Obviously, you will make more money. So, in a way, it, I wouldn't call it unicorn, but that you definitely need to be good to do a lot of money. But as as you mentioned, Rotten before, even you know, AT and T So any any big 
American company that obviously has so much out there. So obviously that you will find a lot of things. That's why they pay not not to, uh, so uh, not to, uh, too much. But you will definitely be able to to live from from that again. Not in the center of Tel Aviv, probably. Yeah. But, uh, on the beach. But I can the say I, I can say I don't do full time bug bounty. It's actually it's also less fun for me because. I, I want to work with people, I want to work with a team, I want to work uh, and then bug bounty, I don't know, I, I didn't find someone else doing full-time bug bounty in Israel that I can just work with him all the time and the people are across the whole globe. So there are people that like it and people that go to live hacking events and I see like the next question is Edvir is asking where can we see the live hacking event? Uh, I don't think you can. Like, I don't think that live hacking events are publicly seeable. There is media coverage about it. You can look at it. Uh, there's, uh, if you go to HackerOne and, uh, or to BugCard, I think HackerOne has a very good document about how they invite people to the live hacking events. Uh, you have like a ratio of 20% of their top hackers. Uh, 20% community based, another per percent is uh, by invitation from the company, and uh, you just need to be active and um, be invited to one. Yeah, as mentioned before, there are so many capabilities, so many options. I mean, start from, from again, if you want to, to start seeing things, start from any, any type of CTF from time to time, they even have. You know, they have something online that you can even learn how to. Uh, then you can YouTube any challenge there and see how others solve it. So that, that will help you actually learn it. And eventually, I think it's from time to time, they have some events, like online events of CTF. Whenever, usually whenever they issue a new CTF competition uh, challenge. And that's, that's some kind of an online event or, or event that you can actually yeah. watch. But, but Again, I, I, want, that... I want to say that you need to ditch the CTF as fast as possible as you can. No, of course, that's just you, as you a fast step. You can learn from the CTFs, but at the end, you want to give yourself the knowledge and capability that you can do. You can find bugs that are not like known bugs. That's It's a game that someone directed you to them. You want to be able to give yourself the possibility that you know that you found this uh, in your own. And this is only outside outside CDFs, regular bug bounties, even VDP places that nobody pays. It's good to play with because nobody wants to find like there are people that want to find some stuff, but nobody is searching actively too much because they don't pay money. So that's that's basically it, guys. It, again, any other question, uh, you can uh, you, you can feel free to to contact uh, each one of the panelists or us via the LinkedIn uh, page. That you can see still see the, the link and the QR code for it. In addition, may I remind you that uh, earlier, uh, Lior put on the chat a link to a form where you can actually uh, uh, sign up, and then you will actually get. Uh, an approval from us of attendees uh, of attendance in the in the in this meetup. It will give you two hours of CPE if you are a member of IC Square or ISACA. I just put it again on the chat. So if you if you are uh, into it, just write down your uh, details and we will send you uh, an approval as uh, uh, a PDF to your email. And again, thanks a lot for uh, Rotem, uh, Yuval, and Chai. It was really, really, uh, again, it made me wise, and I, I thought that I know quite a lot. Uh, so thank you very, very much. Enjoy the rest of the day and the week. And the records, again, again will be uploaded to our LinkedIn community. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.